to compete against the Federation's numerical superiority, Zeon realized that they needed something to give them an edge. And before long, this something would become the weapon that we now all know as the Mobile Suit, with the most famous one being the MS-06 Zaku 2 series. But if history had been just a little bit different, it might not have been the Zaku that was known as the first successful mobile suit, but instead a machine known as the Zuda. A machine that is now instead known as being quite... temperamental. So it probably should have tried out today's partner Yurzap, an application that's all about taking care of yourself with a variety of ever-expanding tools at its disposal. You can manage your stress and anxiety through meditation or yoga classes, sleep better thanks to their sleep stories, or my favorite, relax with their vast library of music. There's nothing quite like chilling at the end of a day of hard work with some gumpla and lo-fi. And if lo-fi isn't your thing, they've also got ambient sounds, nature sounds, ASMR, binaural beats, and more. And in addition to all of that, They've also got an excellent selection of psychological advice, the latest AI technology to give you a warm beginner-friendly experience, and there's also breathing clocks to help you manage your breathing. You can download the app for free right now with the link down below, and by using that link, or my code Kakarot, you'll also get a 60% discount on the yearly premium plan. So, in the early days of Xeon's mobile suit development, there were two machines competing head-to-head -to, -head to become Xeon's new revolutionary weapon. In one corner, there was the Onyx YMS-05 Zaku, and in the other, the Mod's EMS-04 Zida. And purely spec-wise, things were looking good for the Zida. The Mod had been hard at work on a revolutionary engine, dubbed the Mercury Engine, which would then be further developed into the Jupiter Engine, which was used on the Zida. And compared to the Zaku, this engine gave the Zeta significantly more acceleration and mobility. However, it was also this exact engine that caused the downfall of the Zeta for a number of reasons. The most well-known flaw with the engine was that it was extremely unreliable and had a tendency to go critical when overexerted. And the other big issue was that the frame of the Zuda was made too weak and too light in order to maximize the effect of the Jupiter engine. A fact that was sadly demonstrated during one of its public test flights when the mobile suit was literally ripped apart due to the force that the engine exerted on it. And lastly, the price of the Zuda was 1.8 times that of the Zaku, presumably due to the high cost of the Jupiter engine. While proponents of the Zuda have stated that the Zaku mainly won due to lobbying and backdoor deals, we mustn't forget to look at the simple facts of the matter. Sure, the flaws of the Zuda could have been fixed, given enough time and development. But Zeon was preparing to go to war in mere years. So if Zeonic was offering them a package that was ready to go for mass production, why waste valuable resources on a gamble? And that would be it for the Zuda for the next few years. Officially, the project was never straight up cancelled because it was backed by some important Xeon officials, but in practice, it was mothballed and forgotten about in favor of its more successful rival. But with the tides of the war turning against Xeon, they would be forced to throw everything they had into the battle and one of these things would be the Zita. But this wasn't just the old EMS-04. This was the new EMS-010 Zita, a radical departure from its predecessor. The unreliable Jupiter engine had been upgraded into the Saturn engine that was also used in the Dom. Its armor was now overhauled and included a movable spike shield that could also house Sturmfaust, and in terms of weapons, it could use the standard Zaku weaponry or the newly developed 135mm anti-ship rifle. And all of these weapons could also be stored onto the weapon hardpoints on the calves, where they could easily be taken from thanks to one final improvement of the EMS-10, new extendable forearms. And with this, four units were assigned to the 603rd Technical Evaluation Unit to test its viability as a full production unit. 
Unit 1 was outfitted as a commander unit piloted by Jean-Luc Duval and retained the plus-shaped monowai rail also used by the EMS-04. Unit 2 and 3 then were standard machines assigned to Hideto Washia and Ochinan Shell respectively, and of course lacked a commander antenna, but their monowai rail was also changed to a T-shape. And finally, there was Unit 4 used by Monique Cadillac, which was the spare unit and had a plus-shaped monowai rail just like the commander unit. And together these wonder weapons would surely push Xeon to victory. Or at least that's how it was supposed to go. In reality, the EMS-010 was little more than a hastily overhauled prototype from three years ago. And worst of all, despite the engine upgrades, the overheating problem that was supposed to be fixed still persisted. And while I'm sure that many people of the 603rd believed that they were genuinely testing out a new secret weapon and also evaluating its performance, in practice it looked more like they were being shipped rejects and were simply forced to make the most of them. However, the results were there. Despite everything, these machines managed to be surprisingly relevant on the modern battlefield and scored a surprising number of victories. And for their test pilots, this surely meant that the Xeon top brass would realize the potential that the Zudas had. Sure, there were problems, but these could be fixed. Unfortunately, they did not share their sentiments. The machine was still unreliable, and worse yet, the Federation had somehow caught wind of the fact that the EMS-10 was simply the EMS-04 with a new paint job. Overnight, Xeon's champion was turned into the Federation's laughing stock. And since there is a distinct possibility that this information was leaked to the Federation by Xeonic, there is again an argument to be made that they played dirty to discredit the Zita. Perhaps as a petty move after the mod's dom beat out Xeon Exoka to high mobility type, but again, let's be realistic. As a pilot, would you want to pilot a machine that was notorious for blowing itself up? Or as a commander, would you be willing to put your ace pilots in such a machine rather than the more reliable alternative? Still, development of the Zeta would continue and eventually resulted in the EMS-10F Zuda F-Type, near the end of the One Year War. The machine's frame was strengthened with parts of the Gyan, two additional thrusters were added to the back for even higher performance, and perhaps most important of all, the Saturn engine was improved to the point that it no longer risked overloading and destroying the mobile suit. Perhaps this machine could have been the turning point for the Zeta. But it was too little, way too late. The Zeta F was an even more expensive version of the already expensive Zeta, the Gelguk had just been rolled out, and by this time, the legacy of the Zeta had been so tainted that it was quietly forgotten about. Only a few units of the Zeta F would ever be made, with the most famous one seeing action after the One Year War with the Xeon Remnant Group Falak. This Zeta F used the 95mm sniper rifle, an improved version of the 135mm anti-ship rifle, and featured a T-shaped mono eye track. Some other units then have also been known to use the plus-shaped mono eye track, which then makes me wonder if both versions had their own pros and cons, causing certain pilots to prefer one over another or if the various Zuda Fs were simply produced with whatever spare Zuda and Gan parts were still available, including the two types of mono eye tracks. And talking about Gan parts, one more Zuda variant is rumored to have existed and was supposedly built under Xeon's United Maintenance Plan. This machine was simply called Lepus in honor of Xeon's strongest soccer team, which was also called Lepus and named after the constellation Lepus, which is Latin for hair. Although, Chimera might have been a better name for this machine, as it appears to be a combination of different units and spare parts they just had hanging around. The body and head are those of the Zuda, the shoulders are taken from a Gyan Krieger, the arms look like a combination of Zaku and Zuda parts, 
and the legs are a combination of Zida, Gyan Krieger and Efreet Kai parts, resulting in a machine that canonically shouldn't exist or would at the very least be extremely unlikely to exist. The Gyan Krieger is the counterpart of the Gelguk Jaeger in the universe where the Gyan won the arms race against the Gelguk. So in the normal timeline, neither this thing nor its parts ever existed because the Gyan's lineage stopped with the prototype. Is it possible that there were already some test parts developed before the Gyan was canned and that then to repurpose these otherwise lost parts they slapped them onto the Lepus? Yes, but again I would call that unlikely at best. And the last machine that I quickly want to mention in this video is the Jim Kamuf, or as the Zeons pronounced it, the Gem Kamof. Which I guess also makes this the only word that we know how to pronounce with a Zeon accent. And as you've probably guessed by looking at this thing, this was a false flag mobile suit used by Zeon that was made to resemble the Federation's main machine, the Jim. Because of the highly illegal nature of this thing, Xeon never officially recognized its existence and information is therefore extremely limited. But when we look at the armor and the overall build of this thing, we can definitely see some Zuda influence in it. The waist armor looks very similar and considering how thin this thing needed to be, I wouldn't be surprised if the internals were at the very least influenced by those of the Zuda. How the machine fared then was a bit of a mixed bag. The machine was unexpectedly agile because the armor had to be kept thin to mimic that of the gym. So on the flip side, this also meant that its defensive capabilities were extremely low. But the disguise was a success. Even though we might look at this thing and instantly recognize that it's not a gym, we don't have to deal with heavy Minovsky particle interference. Because due to that interference, mobile suit and warship targeting computers would often have to fill in the blanks for whether or not a mobile suit was friend or foe. And in most cases, this trickery worked like a charm with the Gem Kamov scoring several Columbus and Jim kills. As for the machine's weapons then, first of all, it had some special ones to further improve the illusion that this was a real Jim. It had a Zaku knuckle shield with some extra plates bolted onto it to make it look like a standard Federation shield, it had slits in the head where the Vulcans were supposed to be, the beam saber on the backpack is just a normal rod, the Zaku machine gun had a less Xeon-esque box magazine and a few other visual tweaks to make it look more Federation-esque and there even was a Zaku bazooka disguised as a hyper bazooka. But it did sometimes also use standard Xeon weaponry like the 135mm anti-ship rifle or chain mines. The one Gem Kamov then that we know about was given to the Earth Volunteer Corps, a corps consisting of Federation defectors that were assigned to the 603rd Tactical Evaluation Unit. And to further strengthen the illusion, they also received three Gafangana Gems. Unlike the Gem Kamov, these gems were just regular captured gems that were pressed into service by Xeon. Usually, they were repainted in Xeon colors with the correct emblem, but of course, in this case, they were meant to deceive the Federation. And as alluded to previously, these machines would initially be quite successful, but it wasn't to last. Not only were they at risk of being discovered by the enemy, but there was also the constant threat of being misidentified by one of their allies. Which is exactly what happened. The Gafangana Gems were taken out by the Federation and the Gem Kamov was taken out by a Musai that just happened to be sailing by, wasn't aware of these top secret and highly legal machines and simply saw one of their machines being threatened by a gym. In the end, Oliver May of the 603rd gave the machine a negative approval pointing out the high risk of friendly fire and questioning the use of a weapon like this. And finally then, here's some fun facts about the real life history of the Zida. 
the competition between it and the Zaku 1 was based on the real-life competition between Messerschmitt's BF109 and Heinkel's HE100. And there's quite some parallels to be drawn here with the Zaku as the BF109 and the Zeta as the HE100. The BF109 became Germany's main fighter, just like Zaku 2 became Xeon's main fighter, and the HE100 wasn't adopted due to a combination of political reasons, problems during testing, and concerns about maintenance, despite it being a high-performance machine. But just like the Zeta, it wasn't abandoned, and was instead used for propaganda purposes with a brand new model number. As for the color scheme then, that was based on that of the Japanese Air Self Defense Force. And that has been all for this development history on the ill-fated Zeta, a highly combustible machine that has managed to garner a cult following over the years. But personally, I would prefer a machine that didn't run the risk of blowing up in the heat of the moment. Also, a quick aside on Xeon's strongest soccer team, Lepus. You might remember that in the development history of the Zaku 2 commander types that I called them the reps. And well, that was because at that time I'd only seen their name in Japanese writing and that sounded like the best romanization. But for this video, I actually found a batch of the team and it says Leap is on it and has a hair as a symbol. So there's no doubt about it being the constellation. Also, the pilot is called Yuri Kobel instead of Yuri Korbel, as you can tell on this trading card of his. This then just leaves the Okrant part of the name. I'm fairly certain that it's meant to be like the place that the soccer team's from, but how to exactly romanize it or how to pronounce it in English is quite up in the air at the moment. Is it supposed to be a new name like Okrant or Okranto, or is it like the New York and New York situation, where Okrant is just a slightly different way of writing Oakland? But anyways, don't forget to check out yours app with the link in the description down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.